Hey guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be repairing this Valhalla watt meter digital power analyzer. Uh, this isn't a traditional power analyzer in the fact where it gives you like your uh, power factor and all of that and your harmonics, but it's, it's more of a watt meter. Uh, it's an older piece of equipment and as you're about to see, it just blinks. And you know it's going to be a good video if we're going to get to bust out the uh, death cable in it. Uh, always when working with AC mains power, uh, be careful and don't do anything that you're not comfortable with. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tear this thing apart and take a quick look at it. And uh, yeah, just get an idea of what's wrong with it before digging into it too much. Okay, getting this thing apart is real simple. We just have four screws and then it kind of slides apart like a clam. And you normally would have a handle here. You can still kind of get it apart without taking the handle off. So that's the uh, top. And with the bottom, just be careful because your shunt resistor that uh, goes across here is, um, is connected down there. And so that's how the shunt resistor is connected. So just don't pull too hard. But yeah, as you can see, your middle part of the clamshell here just kind of stays with it. Uh, no need to take no need to take any of those screws off to get into it. So that's all there is to tearing it down. All right, I was planning to actually show the problem that it was doing with the screen blinking. However, uh, this tantalum cap was getting hot and so is the board around it. So I just uh, went ahead and removed it and now it works. So I can't uh, show you the problem. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and replace this and get a new one on there. Okay, so I got that one bad tantalum capacitor out. Uh, and we're not going to replace the rest of them, but if this was an instrument that uh, you plan to use a lot or were interested in uh, keeping it, I would definitely replace all of them. Uh, just because when tantalums do fail, they uh, tend to go spectacularly, especially when they keep getting current because they fail shorted almost all the time and then they... Uh, burn up while electrolytics don't always fail shorted kind of the big problem you have with them is they just leak um, Okay, so we're gonna put a new tantalum cap in there uh, This one is slightly higher capacitance. It's 15 microfarad instead of 10 not really gonna cause any problems uh, it, it is the same voltage rating and then just be careful as you flip it over because the shunt is attached down there Okay, so now we have that new cap installed. And uh, as you can see, the a modern tantalum capacitor is significantly smaller than their uh, older counterparts, because this is a uh, higher value, uh, same voltage, but it's a significantly smaller part. All right, and it comes up nicely, no, no longer just flashing. Uh, so yeah, looks like it now works. Uh, and Obviously our voltage and current measurements are going to be blank because there's nothing hooked up to the back here. We can uh, hook it up to the variac here and see if we actually get a voltage measurement. All right, so I have it set up on this variac here. So let's just go ahead and bring it up and take a look to see if the AC voltage works and it does. So, uh, we get right about here should be 115 ish. Yep. So there we go. Um, we do have a working voltmeter. I don't have anything to hook up to it to check the ammeter. Uh, this doesn't have like a traditional outlet on the back of it. They are um, bananas and spade connectors. So I need to make like a little test fixture box to plug into it uh, for plugging a unit under test into it. To, but yeah, I mean, it does work. And what was weird about this is when I got it, I was under the impression it worked and it had sat on a shelf for a while. Um, well, it sat on a shelf elsewhere before I got it, but they, it had been decided to get rid of uh, a long time ago. But yeah, I know 
AC power is not like really common in the hobby space. Uh, it is definitely uh, easier to get hurt with uh, AC than it is with your normal low voltage DC projects that you generally do around. But yeah, it's a uh, nice piece of kit to have back up and running. So let's uh, finish buttoning this thing up and uh, maybe we'll see it again in a future video. Okay, well, I know this was a pretty simple repair. All so we did is open it up and change one capacitor out uh, and we had it back up and running. But you know, not every repair is super complicated. Uh, I always enjoy fixing broken test equipment, so I'm glad to get this thing back up and running. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.